I've spent the past 15 years of my life painting over 1,000 Warhammer minis. Join me in this video as we go through every single one of them and I tell you exactly what I've learned. The table behind me here is completely empty, so let's go to the start of my hobby journey. One of my brothers bought the Battle of Skull Pass box set, one of the original fantasy starter sets, and I got to paint these two models, these dwarven quarrelers. My first army that I wanted to start myself was the Moria Goblins from Middle Earth. I only have four of these models remaining in their original paint job. We'll see more of them later on. After that, I worked on what would be my first playable army, the Haradrim from Middle Earth. I remember getting this war mumak as a birthday present and being so excited about it. The lesson that I've learned from these guys is that over time, you'll need to maintain your models. These guys have moved countries, they've moved different houses, and over time, they've been broken down, and they really need a bit of repair before I move on. And this is something that I've realized across a lot of my armies, especially the ones that I use a lot, is every now and then, you need to spend some time just fixing them up. And here we've got the full Haradrim army. Now I've been tempted to repaint this army a couple times, especially because there's some really nice minis in here, but I kind of feel attached to it. It's like a time capsule of my younger self, so I can remind myself of where my hobbies come from. These next three minis I named the Lizard Marines, and I painted them up for a competition at my local games workshop all the way back in, it must have been, 2012, 2013-ish, and they managed to win the best conversion slot prize. So I'm pretty happy with these guys, especially given that I was super young at the time. After spending time in Middle Earth, I didn't have many friends who were playing the game, so I decided to take Foray into the world of Warhammer 40,000. And that started with the Necrons. I remember saving up my money as a little kid. I had a job walking dogs around the neighborhood, and after several, several, several dog walks, I was able to afford the Necron Battle Host. It's funny having these flayed ones, because at the time that I was getting into 40K, I think these guys just went out of production. Since then, they've been updated twice, so I feel like part of the old guard to even have these models. When I first painted these Necrons, they didn't look quite as nice as this. They looked a bit more dodgy, but I went over them a couple years later to enter them in armies on parade at a local games workshop here in Australia. These guys were followed by some OG models. These are the original Ogryn, and boy has Games Workshop changed a lot since these guys were made. Firstly, when I got these models, they had square bases. Obviously, very different for a 40k model today. And here's a cheeky little librarian. That gets us up to 99 models so far. After doing some OG models, Mini Wargamer Dave inspired me at 13-ish years old to go into the world of chaos as my next 40k army. These guys were a ton of fun. I just got a bunch of cultists. I think I had 80 in total, and I've still got 60 kicking around here in the studio. But being a 13-year-old, I unsurprisingly didn't quite paint all of them. Instead, I've just got these ones complete. These guys were also my first adventure into converting. Because the cultist models didn't have that many variations of pose, and I had a lot of them, I needed to do a lot of work to make them all look different and unique. With 125 miniatures under my belt at this stage, I was feeling pretty confident and I wanted to tackle a project that would be my best one yet. I decided that for the 2015 Armies on Parade, I would be entering my Chaos Army. I was interested in these guys because Age of Sigma had just come out. And to be truthful, these guys have only seen the battlefield one single time. I painted them up as a display piece and have never really got into Age of Sigma since. It was around this time that I went to my first ever tournament, which was a tournament for the Middle Earth strategy battle game, and I decided that these minis were pretty cool and it's something that I wanted to explore a bit more. At the time, I thought that these guys would make for an awesome army. In retrospect, Nine Ring Rates on foot is maybe the worst army in the whole entire world of Middle Earth. But hey, these minis still look really fun, and they were a nice and easy project to paint up. For my next Middle Earth tournament, you had to bring a good army and an evil army. So I decided that I would go for elves and the spiders of Mirkwood. I made a display board, and I still think this looks really great several years later. This one did win an award, I think it was the best display board award at that tournament, and I was pretty happy with that. And these spiders were all just made from old Halloween decorations. They were a lot cheaper than the official Games Workshop models. 
We're 193 models in, and we've got a long way to go, so I think I'm going to push all these models forwards a little bit to make space now. All right, we've clawed back a bit more space on the table, and let's go get the next army. This one is something a little bit different. It's my 10 Thunders crew from a game called Malifaux. This game was really, really big for a couple years in Victoria, but unfortunately has since died. It's a super cool game, and I wouldn't mind getting a game of it here and there if I could. I made this display board for a tournament, and I think I ended up coming second best painted out of 50, so I was really happy with this one. And to this day, it's still one of my favorite painting projects I've done. The thing that I learned from my armies on parade entries, and this Malifaux army, and my previous display boards, is that you should enter competitions. Even if you've got absolutely no hope of winning, the competitions give you a great opportunity to flex your muscles and actually encourage you to get a project done. Let's keep going on to the next thing. This next army is one of my most played armies. It's my Moria Goblins, and it took me into the next thing I learned, which is don't be afraid to do something a little bit different. Up until now, most of my color schemes have been relatively traditional, and for these next three armies, you'll see that I was going through a little bit of a phase. Well, I warned you that I was going through a phase. This was my weird colors phase for sure. I absolutely love this army, and I think these weird colors really work out. The idea that I had for it was that their armor was all oxidized copper, so it is sort of based in reality, but it certainly makes for a striking color scheme. Now, I've played this army a bunch and have taken it to a few tournaments and have had a lot of fun with it. This is classic old Isengard, and this army ticks us over the 250 model mark. Hey guys, Jacob from Behind the Scenes here, and I wanted to let you know that I have just started my brand new Patreon. Over on that Patreon, there is going to be some exclusive content, starting out with a pilot episode of a potential podcast that we'll expand on, and another series where I'm talking about one of my armies that's getting ready for a tournament. These videos, unsurprisingly, take a ton of time for us to make, and I want to be able to keep improving them, getting better equipment, and being able to put more time into them. And by having your support on Patreon, we'll be able to do that. Thanks for listening, and let's get back to counting miniatures. Okay, I promise it's my last one in my weird colors phase, but it is an army that I absolutely love. This is my army of Thraw in Middle Earth, and yeah, purple and yellow is uh, certainly one way to paint Middle Earth. Not sure it's exactly what Tolkien intended, but I absolutely love these guys. Don't worry, we can go back to some more regular color schemes. Uh, this one, this one's still a normal color scheme, but it is my massive Goblin Town army. Goblin Town is as haughty as you can get, and there are so many of these models. I did base these guys to look like they were in the halls of Erebor from The Hobbit, which is like a green marble style, and I was happy with these bases when I first did them, but over time I have grown to despise them. And there is 125 goblins sitting next to me. Man, quality and quantity don't go together too well when you have this many goblins to paint. They're pretty ugly and I'd love to fix them up at some point soon. These goblins and the Army of Thrall were actually painted as some of the first videos on this channel. And when I started the channel, I decided I would start doing some commission painting. In total, I commissioned painted 222 models, which is actually quite a lot. Now, the lesson here is that, man, commission painting is hard. Now, I know that was all the advice on the internet, but I thought I was better than that advice, so I gave it a shot. It was really fun. I'm really glad I did it, and it really helped me get a lot of experience painting things to a good standard quickly, but I am glad those days are behind me because it is so sad to paint something that you're so happy with and then have to give it away. That puts me up to 632 miniatures painted, and we've still got a long way to go. Commission painting unsurprisingly took a ton of my time, so I didn't have heaps of hobby time left around to spend on my own projects. So while I was commission painting, I was working on some of the little projects that I'd always wanted to do and didn't take too many miniatures. So I did my Thorin's Company and my Fellowship of the Ring. These armies are super easy to paint up because the Fellowship's only nine models, although I didn't even have Gandalf because I was playing the breaking of the Fellowship, so only eight models, and Thorin's Company is 15, including the Gandalf and Bilbo. I just realized my Boromir is missing. This is a problem and I need to go find him. Now, my next phase was a little bit of a weird one. 
At this stage, I had just started the YouTube channel, and it was very different to what it is today. Now, I mainly focus on gameplay and Middle Earth related content, but back then, I thought that I could compete with the likes of Squidma and Miniac, so I was doing speed painting challenges. The first one was this big Imperial Fists army. I don't think this army's ever actually seen the battlefield, which is a little bit sad, and it probably goes into the next lesson here, which is only paint things that you actually care about. I was just painting these to make videos about them on YouTube, and no one really watched those videos, which is completely fair enough, because I wasn't good at making videos, so instead I'm left with a bunch of miniatures that I think I probably could have done a better job on if I had given myself the time instead of doing some weird painting YouTube challenge. It wasn't all speed painting because I did do a display piece that to this day I'm still really proud of. It's my Darnath Lysander, the leader of the Imperial Fists, or one of the companies of the Imperial Fists, and I really, really love this guy. It's a really fun display piece with a nice 50mm base to give him plenty of space and a classic huge 40k banner. I absolutely love this model and he does have one of the top spots in my display case. You might have thought that I'd learnt my lesson after those Imperial Fists, but no. A big unnamed YouTuber was running a speed painting competition and oh boy, did I go hard. I'd managed to pick up a ridiculously big bundle of Space Marines second hand and I thought this was going to be the perfect opportunity to paint them. And that's exactly what I did. I think the challenge was about a week long and I basically just painted all week. I think I did like 80 hours of painting in 5 days which was uh, very unhealthy and very ridiculous. Now as a part of this speed painting competition, I painted up this massive Deathwing army and as you can see it's fallen into a little bit of disrepair. Since then these Deathwing models have been updated but honestly I still prefer these old models, I think they look fantastic. The next army that I did for the speed painting comp was my Space Wolves. Now some of these Terminators I did go back after the fact and touch them up and I actually think they look really good. Decals work super well on these nice 30k models. Again, I think that this army doesn't look great but at least it's in a stage where if I want to I can go back and continue to patch them up if I ever decide to play any more Horus Heresy games. We're up to 802 models which is quite a lot but there's still plenty to go and as you can see I'm running out of space on the table. Fulgrim, what a dude, my favourite Primarch for sure. You can see that some of those Emperor's children are way better painted than others. Uh, that's because I did go back to this army after that big speed painting thing and add a few more units to take it to a tournament. When I first readjusted these models I was a little bit worried that I was going to make so much space on the table that it was not going to be anywhere near full and that was going to be kind of really awkward in the end of the video. I obviously have not had that problem. With my 63 model Emperor's Children army down, those 32 mil bases certainly take up a lot of space. I'm going to reshuffle everything forwards because there's still plenty to go. We've gotten through most of it now, but there's a lot of Middle Earth stuff to come. This just shows the difference of what was happening in the start versus the end. Look at all this free space. Look at all this space. Look at all this space. And then look at the Emperor's Children. Just jammed in there. And I love that Emperor's Children army. Alright, we've got a bit of space back and I'm not really sure what to do if we run out again because these guys are squeezed in pretty tight. Now this next one is a bit of a weird one. This next project came well before the new edition of Legion's Imperialis. This was my version of Adeptus Titanicus. The idea of controlling a whole entire army as you would have seen in the lore was a very exciting idea to me. The Orcs I had a lot more of the original epic models because I was able to buy a bundle and they're actually pretty cool. My favourite part of these armies is definitely the flyers. It definitely seems like cheating to count each one of these little individual guys as a single model. So instead what I've said for this project is that the whole thing in total is a hundred models. Now. I think that's fair enough, you look at the footprint compared to the Goblin Town, that's about right, and there's well over 200 little miniature bases in there, so we'll call it 100, and let's do that. A niche little bit of Conquest Creations lore that a lot of you guys probably don't know, is that the original business plan for Conquest Creations was to make resin cast terrain for Dungeons and Dragons, and these miniatures were my first big group of Dungeons and Dragons miniatures that I painted up. Now obviously Conquest Creations is not even remotely close to selling 
any resin cast products today. So it's been really interesting to see how the business and the channel has evolved as we've tested things out. I remember when I first launched my Kickstarter for these guys, I was devastated when absolutely no one bought it. And in retrospect, that makes a lot of sense, but it's always fun to remember the ups and downs of this miniature adventure that I'm on. Here's a small ensemble group of just random miniatures. These three down here were painted for a video. This Lorga I painted up while I was listening to The First Heretic, one of the Horus Heresy books about him. And Loken is my absolute favorite character and the duel between Loken and Abaddon was so epic that I had to get the set and paint it up. These pieces taught me that not all the miniatures you paint need to be for a game. Hell, it's pretty hard to use a bust in a miniature war game, but it was really, really fun to just enjoy the painting process and that being the whole experience, not feeling like I needed to play anything with them afterwards. At this rate, I am 100% running out of space again. So unfortunately, my two display boards are gonna go. The display boards aren't miniatures, so if we get them out of the way, we'll be able to fit more minis on this table. All right, that is looking a lot better. There's a bit more space. Now I have been going in chronological order with these guys. And this next army that I put in here, I was gonna save till later because it was painted over a long span of time and it was added more recently too. And this next army that I'm putting in is my Rivendell and Numenor Alliance. I painted this army over a long period of time. So it probably is about right if you take the average time when a miniature was finished. And with that army on the table, we have officially passed 1,000 miniatures painted. That is 1,041. Remember though, 202 of those were commission paint jobs. So that means at the moment, there's only 839 models here on the table. Let's hit 1,000. Now, one thing that eagle-eyed viewers may notice is that these are the first resin 3D printed Middle Earth miniatures. There was a time where I was running a web store selling resin 3D printed miniatures just like these ones here. In fact, these were the pieces that I painted up for product photography. I no longer do that, but it was a great experience to learn about selling things online. Uh, mainly learning, it's very difficult. This next group I actually begun painting after I did my Moria Goblins. This is when I was in my crazy colors scheme. Now these guys took absolutely forever as uh, you can probably tell by the amount of stripes and polka dots on them. So I did most of the work several years ago now, three or four years ago now, and then I only went back and finally finished them off within the past year or so. This is definitely an army that I would love to expand because there's only about 300 points here. And usually in Middle Earth, you're playing between three and 800 points. So plenty of more stuff to add to this army. I'm just terrified of going back and painting stripes and polka dots. I think I painted these guys just after I finished high school and I was on uni holidays and did not have a job. So uh, when you have that much time, this is the kind of color scheme you come up with. This next army was a purely 3D printed army. It's only 300 points, which is small, as I was saying earlier, but it was built specifically for a tournament, specifically for a tournament called Minimize. And I actually ended up coming third place with this army, which is hilarious because on paper, the army list is absolutely terrible. But it just goes to show that sometimes, even when you bring the worst army list, if you have a ton of fun with it, sometimes the dice just go your way. Now I didn't feel that good about the third place at this tournament because I gotta say, I just got insanely lucky, but sometimes I can carry you through. Now with this next army, you can tell I was in that 3D printing phase because it's another 3D printed army. This one is my Azog's Legion for the Middle Earth strategy battle game. These sculpts come out of Diwali who make some pretty awesome alternatives. Now, I do like this army, but the one thing that bugs me about this one and the previous army for that fact, is that I put them on these MDF bases. These MDF bases are slightly different to the Games Workshop ones because they aren't chamfered on the side. It's such a small detail, but it does really, really bug me about this army. At some stage, I reckon I'm tempted to rebase it all, but it's not an army that I'm playing very often, so that's not gonna be a project that happens for quite a while. This next one is the final 3D printed army in my collection, and it is my Black Riders, the Nazgul. It was after painting this, guys, that I realized I absolutely love the Games Workshop miniatures for Middle Earth, and ultimately, miniatures that are almost Middle Earth weren't quite doing it for me when I'm spending as long painting them as I was. These guys were a fun, easy project as well, 
But unfortunately in this game, this army can be super oppressive, so I've actually never even used it before. At some point, I'll probably give it a shot, but personally, it's not my favorite one. And I think if I wanted to play that army, I'd rather go back and make it with the official Games Workshop miniatures. I learned that once you start a phase, you never fully leave it, because my next project that I did for an Escalation League is my Far Harad. And I went way back to weird color schemes on these guys. Purple skin, light blue, pink flowers on the bases. Yeah, I would not call this a traditional color scheme. This army is made entirely of metal miniatures, which is something that I absolutely love. Games Workshop doesn't make as many miniatures in metal anymore, and they are absolutely my favorites. So I definitely put a lot of effort into collecting all metal armies. And as I've gotten older, have a bit more money, and appreciate the models more instead of just looking at them as gaming pieces, I am pursuing as many all metal armies as possible. And this was the first one. These next guys are some of my best painted miniatures, but also some of my least favorite to use in game. It's my Kazadoom army, and I really, really love these guys. It's an army that I wanted to look really, really good, so I slowed down and I took a ton of time on it. The Faharad that I showed you before this were definitely a rush job, used a lot of contrast paints, and these guys were the opposite. I was investigating non-metallic metals and seeing how well I could paint single miniatures. The problem with these guys is, every single game that I've played them in, I have lost by a landslide. So that's why the army's only small, I've lost a little bit of motivation on it. And this next army is my yellow Rohan. This takes us to over 1000 miniatures on this table, so the total count with this army is over 1200 miniatures that I have painted. These guys I painted in two batches, and some of them look a lot better than others. You can see these guys have nicely battle damage shields, while these ones aren't quite as nice. With these ones, I think I have some of my best painted individual miniatures in my Theoden and my AMR. I really took a lot of time on these guys because I wanted to make sure that they looked awesome. I've also got a cheeky Gandalf the White that squeezes into this army even though he was painted a long, long time before. And we're almost at the end of our journey now. The next one is my all metal Gondor army. Now I think that this is truly a rare army to behold, to have this many metal gondol miniatures. There are some armies in Middle Earth that you can only get in metal, so that makes sense. Whereas Gondor has a lot of plastic troop options, so I'm so happy that I was able to uh, somehow piece together a full metal version of it. Now this is to the point that it would be a lot more tactical if I brought in some of the plastic models, but I can't. I've got to be a purist, I've got to stay all metal on these guys. I painted these guys up the Australian Masters competition and as you can see I chose quite a time consuming colour scheme with all these stripes and the funny thing is I was painting this up on a tight deadline. We are so close to the end now, there is just one tiny corner of the table left but I think that means we've made it, I've got one army left and it is going to fit in this space so we don't need a bigger table. And this final army is my all metal Mordor army. It started out as all metal and as I've progressed, I have added a couple plastic units to it, but they can still operate in their separate army. So there is still that pure all metal version. With these guys, I took a very different approach to painting them. Instead of painting them in batches, every single model has been painted individually. Because of that, I've really captured the essence of these miniatures. And these metal Mordor orcs are my favorite miniatures that Games Workshop creates. And here we are at the end of the journey. On this table there is 1,088 miniatures with another 202 that I painted for commission projects, putting me at 1,290 Warhammer miniatures in total. It's incredible to see all this laid out in front of me. I love that painting Warhammer miniatures has a physical output and I can put 15 years of work in front of me here. I can look at it and know every single project I was excited about and enjoyed doing 
and learnt as I was painting. And it's kind of cool to see myself grow up throughout this collection. With those first miniatures that I painted at nine years old, all the way to these ones that I was working on just a couple days ago. This right here in front of me is why I never want to sell any of my miniatures. For as long as I live, I want to keep them all, even if they're poorly painted, that's totally fine with me, because I feel like this is a little bit of like a legacy, which sounds kind of dumb because I'm still young, but I feel like it is. Like, this is something I'm really proud of, um, of, ha of having made. And yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see this. It's really tough for me to pick favorites because there's been so many different experiences along the way. One of my favorite minis is actually this little dwarf king, which I think is hilarious that I love him so much because he's so tiny and he's part of an army that just loses every single game. But the miniature itself just encapsulates these like really feel good vibes of like a non-combatant model who's just hanging out. Some of my other favorites are my Captain Lysander, my Loken vs. Abaddon duel. And there's so many others, but it's just hard to pick with them all laid out in front of me here. My favorite army to play with is my army of Thrall, which looking amongst this sea of models is actually a tiny, tiny army. So I reckon I need to add a little bit more to it because it's puny for how much I enjoy playing it. My most impressive project I probably think is my Malifaux crew. I painted it when I was, I think 16 or 17 years old and it's really good. It definitely still holds up to some of my paint jobs compared to my ones today. If I had to pick a best painted miniature, I think it's gotta be my Theoden. It makes sense that he's my best because I reckon I spent the most time on him out of all of the miniatures on this table and I was really trying to push myself and flex my painting muscles with him. Now hopefully in the future I can make this video again but instead of 1,000 miniatures on the table we'll have 2,000. I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. I absolutely love this hobby. I love painting these miniatures. I love the friends that I've made through playing these games. Getting into Warhammer truly has been one of the most important decisions I've ever made in my life.